Colorado's governor is preparing to offer some advice for governors of California, Massachusetts, and Nevada. Now the voters in those states have given the okay to recreational marijuana. John Hickenlooper says the number of arraignments in Colorado dropped more than 70% in the first year pot was legalized here. Do you know how much money that saves in court cases? How many young kids would otherwise be in, get, get accustomed to going to jail, which is not a good thing? Now he admits we do not yet have all the data, but sees a lot of positives, and he does not expect legalization elsewhere to affect the industry here. There is no off time. Now that we're done with the presidential race, we're now back on state politics, and here to talk about what's going to happen in January are the new leaders of the state House, state Senate President-elect Kevin Grantham, and new House Speaker, Representative Crisanta Duran. Thank you for both being here again, and congratulations on your new positions. Thank, Thank you. you. So the House Democrats had uh, a bigger lead now, going from just a, well, it's a 37-28 edge. Did I do the math right? That's right. So um, <laughs> given presidential politics, do you have to treat what you're going to do in January differently, seeing what happened nationwide? Does it impact what you're going to do in Colorado? Yeah, I'm very excited about the upcoming legislative session. And one thing about Colorado is that regardless of whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, we have a great history of rising above ugly politics. And we're going to do just that this upcoming um, legislative session. And me and Senate President-elect have already been meeting to talk about some of the needs in Colorado. And I think one area where I hope that we can find common ground is on the issue of transportation. With so many people moving to Colorado, um, there's no doubt that we need to come up with the transportation state wide plan and I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that. Education will also be a priority. We want to make sure that every boy and every girl in the beautiful state of Colorado has an opportunity to succeed and reach their full potential. So you two have already met to discuss priorities for this upcoming session? Yes, we've been uh, in talking with each other for the last, I don't know, month or so, anticipating what may or may not have happened a couple of nights ago, um, but that is exactly what happened um, one way or another. That's We are the leaders of our respective bodies and so we will try to work together on transportation especially uh, probably one of the main topics that we've been discussing uh, finding that that uh, revenue stream that we can all agree upon that we can move forward with and fund transportation so infrastructure. So what does that look like? What it, the, the revenue stream? What what are you considering? That is exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think all options are on the table, and we have to make yeah. sure that we always put people first. And I believe that this upcoming session, we're going to find common ground on a lot of different issues. And, and for me, um, being in this role, it is most important that we deliver results to the people of Colorado and we really make a difference. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with the Senate president. We had also involved other people in the conversation, um, pe folks like... Uh, uh, Senator Lucia Guzman um, and also Representative Polly Lawrence at the time. Um, but I'm ready and willing to sit down and talk with anybody to figure out how we continue to move Colorado forward and in the right direction. And right now, I think something very important that the speaker said is, you know, we're everything's on the table, you know, and we're going to discuss everything and at least try to find the common ground. We we know that our goal at the very end is the same. Um, we have differences of opinion on how well, to get there. What is that goal? I mean, what, are, what do you see are the needs of, of Coloradans? Well, a, a consistent long-term funding stream for transportation. Uh, in order to, if we do bonds, we actually have to have a funding stream in order to pay for those bonds. And what that funding stream looks like is probably at the real heart of the issue here. And maybe some of the differences between the, the parties and the differences between us. And so we're, we're just trying to put everything out there and there's a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of brains working on this that, um, besides myself and the speaker, that are trying to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Well, in previous years, I know the governors believe that moving the hospital provider fee without boring the audience of what that really means, if you take it and put it over here, that that frees up the money that would allow the state to bond for transportation. He believes that if last year's, or still this year's, Senate President Bill Cadman had allowed the hospital provider fee p bill plan to go to a Senate committee, it would have passed. Is that not the option that you guys are considering, or what are the other options? That is certainly going to be on the table to discuss. It's, it has its difficulty still. It did go to a Senate committee, as every bill that comes to the legislature does. Um, there are still some difficulties there, philosophically, with our caucus. Uh, how much more money do we need uh, from the taxpayers, or do we already have enough that needs to be reprioritized? Or do we need to go to a vote of the people and say, Here's our options. Um, do you want 
a tax increase here? Do you want uh, a different funding stream over here? We're putting everything on the table to discuss it. Some are more difficult than others. Um, there might be non-starters on our side, there might be non-starters on the other side, but at least right now we're discussing it and seeing where we can find common ground. Would a tax increase not be That's a non-starter for Senate Republicans? Like I said, there's a lot of non-starters. Uh, we, have, we have to discuss all the options just to see the scope of what we're dealing with. We've, again, another topic that could bore people is about um, construction defects. And we're sure. surrounded by new apartments. This building where Channel 7 is is surrounded by new apartments that don't come with the most uh, uh, parking. And so everything around the building has to be adjusted by the city at, in, in some places. Is it the responsibility of the legislature to figure out a way to, to perhaps stop apartment building, create a way for more single family home, condos, and somehow lower prices? Is that, is that up your alley or is that not the purview of the legislature? Well, I've worked on affordable housing since the very first session that I came into the legislature and there's no doubt that Coloradans are feeling the skyrocketing costs when it comes to housing. Um, that's why last session in a bipartisan way we passed a bill f so that there's tax credits available for developers who build more affordable housing. Um, Republicans and Democrats came uh, together on that. We also came together on those individuals in Colorado who want to save money for their first time home and being able to save that the money for a down payment or closing costs and they can do that now tax-free and so we're always thinking about creative solutions to address the housing issue in Colorado is there a way that apartments are causing a problem by seeing so many apartments being built because there's this construction defects issue with the with, with the law in the state that the, the incentive is to build an apartment instead of a condo because you're going to get sued or you could be sued for so many years under a condo that something needs to change there? I don't think the, the, the apartments themselves are the issue. I mean, it's meeting a supply. Uh, it's meeting a demand. The supply certainly is in the building of those. Uh, but without the condos also being built, uh, it's not meeting all of the demand. Uh, and that is causing some of the problems as far as the pressures going on, on the, the upward drive of rental prices the upper drive of the entry-level housing in a metro area like this. Um, the apartments themselves aren't creating the problem. The, the problem is that we're, we're squelching one aspect of the market over here and it's building more over here, but it's not meeting the entire demand. So I think we need to tweak some things in the law. I think we ha might have some paths to do that. Um, it's going to be tough. But we, I think we can get her done. And we are just about out of time. But what is the one thing that you think, think will be addressed this year, this uh, upcoming uh, session? I will guarantee. Guarantee. Perfect. I will guarantee okay, that go. we will pass a ba balanced budget. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Perhaps because it is <laughs> legally required. You let us down right there, Cassandra. <laughs> and I guarantee that we are going to advocate to make sure that no Coloradan is left behind. We are going to advocate um, for the issues that impact laborers and ranchers and blue collar workers, families across Colorado, undocumented students, because together we are stronger and we have a lot more to accomplish on behalf of all of the people of Colorado. She's good, isn't she? We'll hear more from you starting in January. <laughs> We're hoping for more guarantees, by the way. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>